community we are here again to talk about guess what MRI in the next few videos we are going to focus our attention on the artifacts generated by metal implants on our MR images and we will explore what are the options available to reduce these artifacts preserving therefore a decent image quality for today's appointment, I have decided to pass the torch to my fellow colleague Manuel Conte, senior MRI radiographer with significant experience in metal artifact reduction techniques, who is going to illustrate the topic for us and uh, explain us what are the initial considerations to make in order to reduce metal artifacts in MRI. So Manuel, the stage is all yours. Thanks Julian and hi everyone and welcome to the Everything MRI YouTube channel. So, as you probably know, there is nowadays an increasing need for orthopedic metal implants due to our aging populations. Basically, we are getting old. And despite potential contraindications that we will discuss shortly, MRI has gradually become a crucial tool in the evaluation of post-operative patients with metal implants. And why is that? The reason is that MRI can truly help us to identify things like infection, abscesses, fractures and new formations and as a result it's a game changer for an accurate diagnosis. Nevertheless, a metal implant can have detrimental consequences on the quality of the images that we can achieve and this is caused by the different degrees of tissue magnetizations. The spins of implants and normal tissue, in fact, process with a different frequencies and phase, and this generates a sort of special misinterpretation, which may appear in the images as a signal pileup, signal loss, and geometric distortions. The signal pileup, as you can see on this image, is a displacement of signal from multiple locations to a single location that can cause a signal hyperintensity. Then, we have a signal loss and potential distortions. This can be distinguished between in-plane, when there is a shift in the frequency encoding directions, and through-plane, when tilted slices are sample or excited. So, the question is, which is the right pathway to follow to minimize the impact of these artifacts? First and foremost, we need to make sure that we are aware of which magnetic field strength to choose. Scanning a patient with metal implants in a 1.5 Tesla will produce a different result in terms of image quality compared to 3D scanners. Metal artifacts, in fact, are much less pronounced at 1.5 Tesla due to the differences in the Larmor frequency. Higher bit zero, higher signal, but also more artifacts. However, a key role in this pathway is also played by the type of MRI scanners that we have available. In the center where I personally work, we have a Siemens Sonata 1.5 Tesla, meaning this scanner, and this 3 Tesla Siemens Skyra. Now, as we said, the images at 1.5 Tesla will suffer less from the presence of a metal implant. However, this 3D scanner has a much more recent software installed compared to our 1.5 Tesla. This comes with the benefit of exploding parameters like warp that as Julian is going to illustrate, can have a key role in reducing the impact that metal artifacts have in our final images. Nevertheless, a number of MRI safety considerations should be made. Most of the implants nowadays are paramagnetic, so generally safe in MRI. However, some older implants contain ferromagnetic components that might pose risks at high magnetic field strength, especially as far the heating is concerned. This employs the fact that when scanning a 3T, we might have to deal with consistent sun SAR conflicts and several considerations to be made regarding the SAR operating mode to be used. Considerations that are definitely less likely to be a matter of concern when scanning a patient at 1.5 Tesla. Once we have decided which scanner to use, we need to think about what is the MRI sequence that will be less likely to be affected by metal artifacts. 
In this sense, Turbo Spin Echo sequences are generally a better option compared to Gradient Echo, due to the rephasing property of their refocusing pulses, which make them consider considerably robust. As we can see from this example, Gradient Echo sequences can display large regions of signal voids near metal, compared to TSE, and this is due to the intravoxel defacing caused by B0 in homogeneity. It is also good mention that T1 weighted and proton density TSE sequences with shorter echo times might show a smaller artifact than T2 weighted sequences, which are characterized by longer TE. An additional consideration to make is about the type of fat saturation to be used. Some sequences might be more recommended than others due to the fact that they are not particularly affected by the magnetic field in homogeneity. If you haven't watched it yet, make sure you go and have a look at the different fat saturation techniques explained in one of the last videos uploaded in Everything MRI YouTube channel. In general, steer sequences, as we can see here, can be considered the sequences of choice for fat saturation when imaging patients with metal implants. The reason is, they are much more resistant to B0 in homogeneity compared to sequences characterized by a spectral suppression of the fat signal, like SPEAR for example. We can clearly see that the signal loss and the signal pileup due to the presence of the metal implant are significantly less pronounced when STIR is acquired. Another good strategy, otherwise, could be thinking acquiring a Dixon sequence. In contrast to spectral fat saturation, Dixon is not particularly sensitive to both B0 and B1 magnetic field in homogeneities. The robustness of Dixon against metal artifacts, however, can be considered only as intermediate. There are definitely fewer artifacts that with spectral fat saturations but the result is usually worse if compared with a solid technique like STIR. The advantages of Dixon over STIR, nevertheless, is a higher SNR. We can produce in-phase and fast suppress images in a single acquisition, and they can also be used post-contrast injection. Okay, so now that Manuel help us with this video to figure it out, what are the best sequences to use and what are the things to consider when choosing the right magnetic field strain for metal artifact reduction, we need to start to understand what are the MR parameters to alter to preserve or potentially improve our image quality. And this is exactly what we are going to discuss in the next educational appointment. So guys, please, subscribe to the channel, stay tuned. If you have any questions, just type them below. As usual, I will see you around. <laughs>